Many years ago, I had a preliminary hearing on a marijuana possession charge um, back when it was a felony in certain circumstances. And <clears throat> without going into the exact details of the case, I knew that when I had a chance to cross-examine the police officer at preliminary hearing, that I was going to point out that the encounter he had had with my client could not possibly have happened the way he said it did, and that when he says that he saw my client drop uh, a bag of weed and a one-hitter smoking pipe from his closed-fisted hand into the back of his pickup truck, that he was guessing and speculating because there's no way my client got out of the car from the wrong door, from the driver's side door of his pickup, because the driver's side door was uh, broken, he had to get out of the passenger side door with a clenched fist. And when he was told to put his hands on the side of the truck with a clenched fist, with ostensibly with marijuana and a one hitter pipe in it, uh, that he just let him take that clenched fist and put it up on the side of the car. And what I did is I invited this police officer to come across the street to my office. I, I said, I'd like to practice my questions. <laughs> Now this was a very calculated decision because I knew this officer, I liked uh, this officer, and he knew I liked him, and he knew I trusted him at the time. Uh, and uh, I didn't want to make him look bad in front of God and everybody at the prelim, so I gave him this opportunity and I asked him these questions. And when I got to the part about my client having a clenched fist and him not making him unclench his fist or seeing what was in his fist, he realized as I asked him these questions uh, that he didn't see my client put that in there. He just assumed he put it in there because he found it in the bed of the truck. And uh, the officer said out loud to me, he said, oh, I see what you're doing there. And I said, I'm not doing anything. I said, I'm, I'm just asking you questions. I'm not doing anything at all. I said, tell, tell me what I did. What was I doing? He goes, oh, he goes, I understand. So he went and talked to the, the DA and uh, the case was resolved. Uh, I think it was dismissed. It's been a long time. But the police officers in my community were never allowed to visit with me at my office after that, uh, which is uh, it's a violation of the Oklahoma ethics. I don't know what the ethics are in your state, but a prosecutor cannot tell witnesses not to talk to uh, a lawyer. And he told the police chief to tell his officers that they were prohibited from talking to me in my office. Now, what's the point of all this? The point is, is that officers, uh, a lot of the time, most of the time, uh, I'm not gonna say nearly all the time, but maybe nearly all of the time, they try to tell the truth. However, their testimony is tainted by some principles, uh, many of which they don't even uh, know or are not aware of what's going on. Number one, they're taught to testify. You need to ask them about this on cross-examination. Uh, cross they're taught to testify. They take a course in cleat about giving testimony. Uh, who else goes to class to learn how to testify? Who has to go to school and take a class with an instructor and a handbook and a, and a, and a check box and a place to take notes and to take a quiz or to do a practice uh, a practicum on testimony uh, to learn how to tell the truth. Who else on this planet goes to school to learn to tell the truth? Nobody. So, but they're taught things like in Cleet in Oklahoma, they used to be, I haven't checked lately, they used to teach them, don't ever backtrack, don't ever give in to a lawyer's questions uh, that's gonna cause you to backtrack or change your testimony. Uh, what that translates into is that they're taught to never admit you make a mistake. Never admit under oath to a criminal defense lawyer that you made a mistake. And what do all humans do? We all make mistakes. And so they're taught, don't admit that you made a mistake. And a lot of them won't do it because they've had that drilled into their head at, at truthful testimony school, right? Uh, it still seems funny to think about it. Uh, but it's drilled in their head. They're not going to change their story. They're not going to admit that they made a mistake. So I asked them about that. Did you go to Cleet? 
did you go to a, a class where they taught you how to give testimony? And they taught you never to change your testimony under oath because it'll make you look bad, right? Well, you make mistakes. I make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Cross-examine them on that. There are some other concepts that apply to police officers uh, that they are in uniform and they have this air of, of confidence in this responsibility. It's a great responsibility. Many times it's a grave responsibility that they have. And the last thing what they want to look like is unprepared, not knowledgeable, not factual. Uh, they don't want to look stupid. They don't want to look errant. Uh, and they certainly, uh, as I said before, don't want to admit they made mistakes. So officers will give testimony as fact when they're actually speculating about the distance or the speed or the color of the car uh, or what uh, they'll give a verbatim quote of what somebody said and it's not exactly a verbatim quote because they sat down two hours later and typed it into a computer or wrote it on a notepad. Uh, that can't be verbatim. Um, and yet you'll see things in quotes in police reports and they will testify under oath under penalty of perjury facing prison time. That is an absolute verbatim quote. That's why I put it in quotations, even though they wrote it down uh, two hours later. Now, sometimes they'll have it in their notes. Ask them, did you put it in your notes contemporaneously? They're not lying. They're not being disrespectful to the process. They've just been trained and coached uh, to have that type of cynicism and skepticism uh, in giving their testimony and being cross-examined by a scumbag criminal defense lawyer like you. Uh, so uh, don't take it personally and, and don't bow up on them because if you bow up on them, they're just going to clam up more. And, and, and sure, there are officers out there who will intentionally, deliberately lie because they have God on their side and they think they're supposed to win and it's okay for them to lie and cheat and steal. A very small percentage, they'll do it. The bigger problem is people that guess and speculate and fill in the gaps uh, and, and do so and give testimony in a way that they uh, tr create the impression that they're absolute facts, that they're absolutely 100% sure of, and when that's not true. So be aware of that and be aware of the paradigm that exists for them when they get on the witness stand uh, and they're being scrutinized by the prosecutor, they're being scrutinized by the judge, there might be other officers or a case agent at the prosecutor table. Uh, scrutinizing their testimony and it's very intimidating for them but you can guide them through the truth of why they testify the way they do and why they're so reluctant to admit that they made a mistake uh, this is a bit longer of a video than I intended to make but this is a very important thing a deliberate lie is easy to cross-examine a deliberate lie is easy to impeach a reckless falsehood is almost impossible to impeach and as I've said in another video, a half truth is like half a brick. You can throw it twice as far with twice the accuracy. That is the dangerous testimony. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, sorry this is longer than normal, but I appreciate you very much and I look forward to talking to you some more. Thank you. I've sat at the feet and studied with some of the greatest trial lawyers and titans in this country. I've learned from some of the members of the inner circle of advocates. And you can't be where I've been and studied with who I've studied with and shared a courtroom with the people I've shared them with for over 20 years and not know a few things about winning successful jury trials. It's time for me to share what I've learned with you. I'm retired Judge Kenneth Adair and I want to help you be a better trial lawyer for your clients. Learn more at trial.win or subscribe to this channel to get regular updates about my latest trial strategy videos.